Jesus. We believe in God the Father. 
We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe in the God of Fire. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us to life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe in the conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. cross yes. and when you rose from the death 
when you rose from the grave you gave us that victory of God Amen. and Lord tonight we want to see that victory and force in our life again and again and again Lord you say for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death so Lord tonight we want to say we believe we believe in you, O oh God. We believe that you love us. O oh, Heavenly Father, we believe you are our provider. We believe you are our Redeemer, Jesus. We believe, Holy Spirit, you are our comforter. And that you have come to strengthen us tonight. You have come to baptize us in power. You have come to heal and to deliver. to sin, no longer slaves to the rudiments of this world, to the elements of this world, but set free to worship, set free to love, yes. set free to forgive, set free to receive healing, oh hallelujah, set free to praise you, for oh, you are worthy, for oh, there's power in praise, there's power in the name of Come and take away every struggle in our lives, O oh Lord. Lord, even though we are in this vessel of weakness, but nevertheless, Lord, you have given us the power of the Holy Spirit and that you have empowered us from within. And Lord, you say a river will flow out of our belly. Lord, a river of life. Oh Lord, let it happen tonight as we worship you. For it is the work of God it is the miracle power in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. whom we believe and whom we love and we wait for his second coming oh once again to deliver and to restore all things Lord we hunger for you Lord Lord hallelujah you know people of God there's there is a hunger deep within you that only God can fill. There is a void, there's an emptiness deep within you that only God can touch. The world can promise you everything. People can promise you everything. And sometimes we look to people, we look to the church, we look around us. But church tonight, we need to look at Jesus, the author and the finisher. Yes, He's the head of the church. We look at everything, but we forget He's the head. He's the one that holds all things together. Lord, tonight supernaturally come right now and touch your people. Let your word, let the entrance of your word give light. And Lord, open their ears in the name of Jesus. Anoint their ears. Anoint their eyes to see things and to understand things. Things which is hidden since the world began. Things that you say that you will share with us. For the mystery of the kingdom of God is given unto those that believe and to those 
that love the name of Jesus. You know, tonight, I want you to come back to Him. No other thing can fill that void in your life, that disappointment, that despair, that struggle, that depression, that emptiness. And I think the pandemic that the world has gone through has brought all of these things out. And sometimes it has brought the worst in every situation. But tonight we have hope in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Can you rejoice in that? You have hope in Jesus. It says those that call upon the name of Jesus will be saved. And it's not just talking about spiritual salvation but it's talking about salvation in any in every sense oh hallelujah salvation to his fullest he has come to restore he has come to bless he's come to heal yes and that's why you know people of god we need to cling to him because a branch can do nothing except that it abides in the vine except it abides in Jesus and that's why we need to cling to him we need to cling to him we need to draw near to him and he say he will draw near he will draw near to you maybe you have never worshipped before like this with all of your hearts you know tonight why not we sing the chorus part of this song one more time and I want you to pour out you know your heart towards God I want you to say God take me oh God hallelujah take me oh God Lord I place my life in your hands once again I may not know what is happening in my life I may not know even sometimes why I feel this way but Lord, I know when I place my life in your hand, you are going to heal me. You are going to touch me. You are going to supernaturally fill my life. Oh, fill my cup, oh God. Let it overflow with joy, with goodness. Oh yes, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Yes. Come on, sing along. of God, we just place it in your heart as you sing. Fiction. We believe that He conquered death. Oh. We believe in the resurrection and He's coming back again. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit and He's given us new life.
How many of you feel it in your heart tonight? Hallelujah. God is renewing you. God is rebuilding the altar of worship in your life. And along with that, He will restore all things. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, turn to one another. Just acknowledge one another. Say, God bless you. God loves you. God appreciate you. Worship Him. I love you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you know that God is going to move in this place? Amen. God is preparing us because uh, next week will be Good Friday. All right. There'll be a service in this place on Friday, 7.30 p.m. It will be a communion service and uh, we will have worship. We will have a short meditation, a time of short meditation with the Word of God. And then we will partake the Holy Communion together. All right? Uh, I'm not going to drag the service long on Friday because the next day we are going to have another service and uh, traditionally is known as Holy Saturday. And uh, some very interesting things happened during the three days uh, that Jesus was in the belly of the earth, as the scripture tells us. And uh, it is also a time that we come back and give thanks to God. Amen? Praise the Lord. I believe that all the three services will be wonderful. Then on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday service will be at 10 a.m. in the morning. All right, we have that every year except for the last two years. And uh, I know that God is going to restore all things. Amen? You need to continue to pray. I know people are you know, getting infected here and there. Even though we thank God, it is not very serious at this time, like, you know, when it first happened. But nevertheless, you need to pray. Come on, turn to one another and say, you need to pray. Yes, because prayer can accelerate things. You understand? In, <laughs> in the plan and the purposes of God, God wish and God desires to move through your prayer. And that's why it's very important for you to, to pray. And uh, not just as a church, but also, you know, individually, you know, in your homes. And, uh, you know, uh, fill your days with prayer. Can you do that? Can you do that? Hallelujah. Even short prayer during your lunch break, you know, as you work. You know, look to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Glory be to God. God is good. So, uh, next week, just invite the people. And, uh, you know, let's fill this place up. Uh, we used to have more chairs, but let's wait for the right timing. Amen? We don't want to hurry things, uh, but let's wait, you know, for God to lead us. Can you say amen to us? And then we will restore all things in, in God's time. Amen? But you need to be faithful now. Come on, turn to one another and say, I need to be faithful now. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, this couple of weeks, I've been talking about you know, the church age. I've been talking about the timeline that we live in. How many of you know that time is not stagnant? There used to be a saying, time waits for no man. All right, time moves on. And as the timeline moves, you know, God does different things at different seasons. Can you say amen? And as a church, as a people of God, we need to move. You know, you cannot say, hey, you know, the past is like this. Why not we just do like how the past is. You know, God is moving. And you can see the world is moving. It's not the same. Even the world order politically, uh, um, you know, they call it geopolitically. Things are changing very rapidly. You know, sometimes we are, we as believers, we tend to, you know, be asleep. And sometimes the enemy wants you to be asleep. But the Bible says at the end time, the church will become very active. Can you say amen? Some will be sleeping, but if you are among those that respond to the call of the Holy Spirit, you know, God is going to do something wonderful. Amen. God is going to use you. And I tell you, what an exciting time that we are living in to be used by God. And let me tell you, it's going to be very, very different. And that's why we need to understand the timeline that we are living in. Today, I will name the title of my message, The Church Age 
God's mercy is for all. Hallelujah. Let me re uh, repeat it once again. God's mercy is for all. Come on, turn to one another and say, God's mercy is for all. Hallelujah. How many of you know, you know, we live in a very exciting times. You know, we live in a very blessed time because of what Jesus has done. Actually, a lot of us did not really understand what Jesus went through for us on the cross. And we're going to look at it next, you know, this coming Friday. And we're going to look at it, how, how he actually does and, and what actually happens, you know, three days, you know, in the belly of the earth. You know, the power of darkness was shaken. A lot of things was released. Do you know that? And from that day onward, the day where Jesus was resurrected, you know, the church was born. And many say that the church age start at Pentecost. And uh, I want to tell you, this is the best time to live. How many know you are so blessed? I was, you know, I was uh, at the door. Hallelujah. I don't mind being a, a doorkeeper for the house of the Lord. Sometimes I like to stand there, you know, and to welcome people. I tell you, what a joy to welcome people into the family of God, into the congregation of the saints. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, blessed you know, it's the job of an usher. Do you know that? Blessed, hallelujah. If you really understand what is the role of a gatekeeper or an usher. You know, it's not a, you know, it's a, not a pagat, you know. It's not just a pagat. You know, God is, is placing a responsibility on the church. And I believe that as we pursue, we are going to understand our role. And that's why it's very important for, for us to understand the timeline that we are living in. And let me tell you this, we are living in one of the most pampered and blessed time in human history. Do you know that? I mean, you just look at the worship team. You know, in those days, you know, if someone were to preach, you know, you can't hear the person's voice. You know, people ha have to relay the information, you know, from those in the front to those at the back. And, you know, they have to be situated in certain place. And, uh, uh, but now, you have this PA system, you have all these lightings, and, and you know, you worship in comfort. Do you know that? And sometimes, even in comfort, we can't worship. We can't concentrate. Am I right? Too comfortable. We fall asleep. Or our mind wanders. But we are really in a blessed age. You know, a lot of us, when we read the Bible, you know, I used to think that, well, how nice is it to live in a time of the Apostle Paul? You know, that is the beginning of the church age. At the time of, uh, um, you know, Apostle Peter and see all the wonderful miracles. You know, we only look at the good things. But do you know how hard they suffer? Do you know what condition they worship in? You know, the early Christians at the height of persecution, they did not worship in elevated places like this with lights shining, with PA system. You know, sometimes, you know, we take all these things for granted. You know where they worship? They worship underground. They worship in the catacombs. Do you know what a catacombs is? You know, the place where people kept their death, their dead. You know, the dead who were buried. They have to meet there because they were under persecution. And let me tell you, the church grew. Glory be to God. We are so blessed. You know, the church nowadays at this age, look at the church, look at the wealth that God has given that has entrusted. You know, but yet we fail in so many ways. Do you understand that? We fail in so many ways. You know, don't, don't say about giving up your life to Jesus. You know, sometimes, you know, as I was saying, you know, uh, two weeks ago, you know, coming to church is also very difficult for us already. But we live in such a blessed age. Amen? You know, anywhere you want to go, you know, within two hours you are there. You know, in those days... I tell you, even with a camel, I don't know how long it will take for you to reach KL. We are living in a blessed age. Now, don't talk about that. Talk about, you know, uh, the advance in, in medicine, in health. You know, you could go through a surgery. You know, I was talking to Amit. Praise the Lord. I can use your name. I'm making you famous, all right? Your name will be all over the world in YouTube. And we were talking about the operation that we went to. I went through an operation last year. He just recently did. And I say, how is it? You know, he say, oh, 
Everything is okay. I'm not afraid. You just imagine in those days if they have to operate someone. You know, the only thing that you can have is wine. And you are awake. You know, I was telling, um, you know, I mean, that when they put me into the, um, into the operating theater, you know how they used to just transport you? And, um, you know, all the time I was praying. And all the time I was closing my eyes. You know, because the things around me would just sort of, you know, distract my, you know, my, my attention. And, uh, you know, at the operating theater, the doctor was trying to explain certain things to me. And I was having my eyes closed. I was just nodding. And the doctor just looked at me and said, hey, I need you. <laughs> I need your eyes to be open. I want to show you some things, you know. And uh, it was quite funny. It was a very funny situation. But nevertheless, you know, like what Amit said, everything went through fine. Before you know it, you're already awake. And how blessed we are. Can you say amen to that? And yet we complain. Yet when God asks us to commit, we find it so difficult. Do you understand what I mean? I tell you, you know, when I ask the Spirit of God to search my heart, you know, this is what the Spirit of God showed me. And I'm sharing it with, with, with you because many times we, we say, hey, how, how wonderful it, it, it is. If I was following Jesus, it would be great. But do you know, they tried to stone Jesus. Do you know it was a hostile crowd? Do you know the sweat? Sometimes they go without food in the wilderness. You know, it was not in the comfort. But yet they serve God. Can you say amen? And how much more should we? Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. So there's a danger in all this blessing. And that's why, you know, the Bible says at the end time, you know, because iniquity abounds. Because all these things, at the same time, it brings out the good in us, but it also brings out, you know, the worst in us. And uh, people, ungodly people use all this technology, you know, to entice other people. And so what happens is this, before you know it, you know, your, the schedule of your day is filled up and you have no time for God. You have no time to meditate. You have no time, you know, to seek God and to learn the things that God wants to share with you and the things that He wants, you know, for you to understand so that your life will be better, so that you'll be stronger, amen? So in the times of evil, you'll be, be able to stand. So there is a danger in that and this is what we must realize before it is too late. You know, like in the days of Noah, how the flood came, everything was okay. If you hear about the war that's happening in Ukraine, many people still in disbelief. You know, especially the first couple of days, if you watch the news, many say that they did not know that such thing will happen. And uh, in fact, both sides of the armies, you know, there have been reports that most of them don't really know it will be like this. Nobody knew until suddenly things happened. So today I'm talking about the church age. I'm going to tell you, you know, when it begins, when it ends, and how God expects us to live. All right? And I'm going to give you some uh, important points or some um, information that usually we don't do. Uh, I think usually we don't do in church. But I think it's necessary because... God wants us to, to move. Now, when I say, you know, uh, um, it's not commonly shared in church, you know, because, you know, in the last season, things move very differently. But right now, God wants us to grow up. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Come on, tell one another, grow up. Hallelujah. Because your inheritance comes. Do you know a little boy, a little child cannot inherit? You know, uh, Ellen, you know, has properties, and he, if he wants to give it to Kairos, you know, you know, it might be in Kairos' name, but Kairos, because he's a little boy, I don't know where he is he right now, he's, all right, maybe in children's church or in the nursery, <laughs> okay, and uh, he's unable, he's unable to inherit it, he's unable to enjoy the inheritance, you understand? And that's why, you know, in the Bible, you know, you look in, in the Bible, all right, 
There's so many information there. There is so many things that God wants to share with us. But let me tell you how many of us really, really, you know, make it a point to understand everything that God is trying to tell us. You know, most of the time, you know, we just stick to some very basic things. But Paul is saying, he said, if you want to grow, if you want, you know, to understand what is happening so that you'll be strong, hallelujah, so that you will not be like the world, you know, that is, that is tossed to and fro with every information that is coming up, with every incident that is happening, you know, so that you will be strong and steadfast and not be swept away and not be deceived. The Bible says in the last days, there will be lying wonders. There will be lying wonders. So what happened is this, if you want to be strong, then you need the full counsel of God. Can you say amen? You need the full armor of God. You don't just put on one armor because you like it. You know, you need to grow up and take the whole thing that God is going to share with you. Amen? That God wants you to know so that you will be strong. So the church age starts, hallelujah, at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came, when Jesus, you know, resurrected, hallelujah. You know, the church age started. In Romans chapter 11, verse 11 to 12, this was Paul trying to share with the early believers. And this is what he said. Rome, Romans chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. It says, did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Now, Paul is trying to explain to them, you know, uh, Rome is not in Israel. They are the Gentiles. They are the um, Consider as the non-Jews. And what happened was this, they rejected Jesus. As a nation, they rejected Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that there is no Jews that believe in Jesus. There are Jews, even up to today. There are Jews. They call it the Messianic Jews. There are Jews that believe in Jesus. All the uh, uh, um, early Christians are all Jews. But the nation of Israel as a whole, as a whole, and their leaders did not accept Jesus. All right, they are the ones that make the, de the decision. That's why it's very important that we pray for our leaders. Can you say amen? Because the leaders decide. You know, the people can be different, but the leaders decide. So if the leader wants war, that's why it's very important. The people doesn't want it. But how does you change that situation? You need to pray. Can you say amen? You need to pray. So in verse 11, it says, Did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? So it's talking about Israel because Israel reject. The majority of them re reject. Only a remnant receive. But at this church age, you know, the Gentiles becomes believers. Many of them accepted the gospel. And so here, he says, of course not. God has not rejected Israel. Because God is good, amen? His mercy is to all. And he says, of course not. They were disobedient. Yes, they were disobedient. So God makes salvation available to the Gentiles. But he wanted his own people to become jealous and claim it for themselves. Now, in the King James, he said, provoke them to jealousy. Now, now, why am I sharing with you this? I'm going to give you information. But you need to know how to use the information. Amen? To strengthen your life. Can you say amen to that? So, here you see, you know, he says, actually, you are blessed. Hey, Gentiles, you are blessed. God is using you to make the Jewish people jealous. Do you know that? You know, how many of us have fallen, you know, when, when we discover the Old Testament and say, oh, how blessed is it? How blessed is, is it? You know, uh, uh, to be God's chosen people. Yes, they are God's chosen people. But do you know that God has used you to provoke Israel so that Israel will return back? That's why you, your life is very important. Can you say amen? You must know that you are blessed. Hallelujah. So when they see your life 
and your liberty and the blessings and the power that you have in Christ Jesus. It should be the other way around. But sometimes, you know, especially during this time, you know, we are so, you know, when we see, you know, uh, 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 um, the Jewish people, we always think that they are special. Yes, they are special. But do you know, you are equally special, if not more. Do you know that? Because you believe in Jesus and the commonwealth, the commonwealth of Abraham is upon you. Can you say amen? You are partakers. There's no longer Jews or Gentiles. Amen? Male or female in the kingdom of God. We are all one in Christ Jesus. So here you see, you have to understand, Paul is saying, hey, you know, don't, don't look at yourself low. God loves you. You know, we always compare ourselves with other people. Am I right? Oh, how I wish I could be this. How I wish I could be in America. How, how I wish I could be in, in this church. And you look at some of this church is being rocked by, by so many scandals. Aren't you glad you're in Breakthrough City Church? Hallelujah. Be glad where God has placed you. Amen. Be faithful because He's coming back. He's watching over you. Amen. And He's going to reward you. All right, in verse 12, it says, Now if the Gentiles were enriched because the people of Israel turned down God's offer of salvation, think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. Hallelujah. And it's going to happen. God is going to bring all this into fulfillment. Can you say amen? God has not rejected Israel, even though they have rejected Him, because God remembered His promise. Can say amen. You once also rejected Jesus. You did not live, even though you may not know him. But your life is in rejection of the gospel. You are not living it according to the will and the purposes of God. But now he has accepted you. Amen. He has welcomed you into his family. All right. The second scripture portion of scripture I want you to see is in Romans chapter 11, verse 25 to 36. I hope that tonight you will understand all those parts in the Bible that you say, oh, I don't understand why it is written down. I hope you will understand it tonight because God is not just speaking you know, to the Jewish people of, of, to Israel of that day, but God is speaking to all of us here. Amen? Because all scriptures are inspired of God. Amen? And it's profitable. It's profitable. Can you say amen? All right? Okay. Romans chapter 11, verse... 25 to 36. I'm not going to go through everything, but I just want to just pick up a couple of scriptures here. In verse 25, he said, I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, that you will not feel proud about yourselves. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we read this together? You read it in your version. Verse 25. Paul is saying, I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, so that you will not feel proud about yourselves. Now, why Paul is saying that? You know why? Because the Jews in the days of Jesus, because they are the chosen people, God has entrusted them with so much. So they think that they have more privilege than other people. They are so proud of their heritage. They are so proud of the position that they are in. And God is saying, hey, you know, they will never think that a Gentile will be equal to them because of the blessing that they have in, in God. Because they have all the prophets. They have all the scriptures. You know, the Gentiles in, in those days, you know, they have nothing. And God says, don't be proud. If you are proud like them, God will reject you. That's why the Bible says God receives the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Can you say amen? That's why humble yourselves. Understand this. And that is why last week I said we have a responsibility to pray even for the unbelievers. Do you know that? I tell you many times in our prayer meeting, in all that we pray, we always pray for the righteous. Am I right? Oh God, bless Andrew. Hallelujah. Bless him even more. Oh God, bless Ellen. Oh God, bless Captain. Oh God, bless Philip. Oh God, bless Jacqueline. Oh God, bless so and so, you know, it, on and on. But many a times we don't pray for the unrighteous. And the Bible says we have a 
responsibility to pray for all men. Hallelujah. Am I inspiring you tonight? I want to inspire you to go for higher things. Amen? Because I tell you, I tell you the, the view at higher ground is always better than in the valley. Hallelujah. And God has given you everything, all that you need so that he can elevate you. Praise the Lord. So he says, I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, so that you will not feel proud about yourself. Some of the people of Israel have hard hearts. You see, why they have hard hearts? Because they were proud. And when the Messiah came, they, they did not understand it because they were so full of themselves. They are so full of their blessings. Now, in this coming Easter, this coming Good Friday, you know, sometimes we can be so full of ourselves that we forget what God has done for us. And this is what it says. Don't be proud. Some of them, some of the people of Israel have hard hearts. But this will last only until the full number of Gentiles comes to Christ. Now, the end of the church age will be when the fullness of Gentile is fulfilled, has come. Now, what does it mean? It means that the full number of the Gentiles that need to be saved, that will be included in the kingdom of God, has finally come. Hallelujah. And this will happen, and we are seeing this happening now. So a lot of things that is happening right now in Israel, you know, they are still blind, you know, to Jesus as the Messiah. You know, but nevertheless, God has blessed them. God has kept their promise to them. But you know, one day they will come. As a nation, they will turn back. Their leaders will turn back. And God says that that will happen, you know, when the fullness of Gentile, the full number of Gentiles comes to Christ. Hallelujah. And, and the Bible says when they return back to Jesus, you know, the world will never be the same again. The world will never be the same again. You know, everything will be restored. Can you say amen? How many of you know that when Jesus rules, there'll be no sickness? Do you know that? Hallelujah. When God's kingdom comes, there'll be no sickness. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. There'll be no handicap. How wonderful the world is. You know, I mean, we will not have to go through operation. Hallelujah. Because we are made whole in Christ Jesus. All right. Praise the Lord. Amit loves it. All right. Praise the Lord. You are getting famous today. Praise God. So in verse 26, it says, And so all Israel will be saved, as the scripture say. The one who rescues will come from Jerusalem, and he will turn Israel away from ungodliness. Verse 27, And this is my covenant with them, that I will take away their sins. Verse 28, many of the people of Israel are now enemies of the good news. This benefits you Gentiles, yet they are still the people he loves because he chose their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 29, for God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. Can you praise God for that? God is still calling you, even though sometimes you are stubborn, even though sometimes you are slow. Hallelujah. But you need to respond, okay? In verse 30, once you Gentiles were rebel, were rebels against God, but when the people of Israel rebelled against him, God was merciful to you instead. Now they are rebels, rebels, uh, rebels, and God's mercy has come to you so that they too will share in God's mercy. Now verse 32, this is what I want you to see. It says, for God has imprisoned everyone in disobedience so he could have mercy on everyone. Hallelujah. You see, the Jews never realized, you know, that God's plan was to include the Gentiles also. Yes, there were some scriptures that they know the Gentiles will share, you know, in the blessings of Abraham, you know, but they never understand that you will be on an equal footing. Because of the cultural bias, you understand? Because of their life experience. And God is telling us, you know, at the end time, be generous. Can you be generous? Can you be loving? 
even to the ungodly. You know, the Bible says, don't join them. How many of you can say hallelujah, amen to that? Don't join them in their sin. You know, but you can love them. You can pray for them. You can share with them the love that you have in Christ Jesus. And you will see God use you in the last days. You know, we, we have yet to see the great harvest that God has promised us. Amen. How many of you believe there will be a great harvest? All right. The soul, those who win souls are wise. Amen. Those who win souls are wise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know, the rest of the passage, I want you to go back and read. And it begins to, to say, how, how wise is God's plan? You know, that He, he brings about all these things, you know, so that everyone will experience His mercy. And that's why, you know, it says here, God's mercy is for everybody. All right, before I end tonight, I just want to quickly tell you how we should live, knowing all these things. Amen? We are, we are not second-class citizens in heaven. Amen? Praise the Lord. God is using you. You have all the privileges. Israel is Israel. We do not replace them. They do not replace us. But the Bible says there will be two camps and two camps will come together. Amen? Praise the Lord. So how should we live? Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 15. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Glory be to God. You know, salvation at that time, before Jesus came, it was mainly for the Jews. For the Gentile, oh, you know, you just taste at the fringes. Uh, you remember the story? You know, that Jesus said, you know, uh, the bread, the children should have the bread. And then the, the Canaanite woman pleaded with Jesus and said that, you know, even the dogs, because the Gentiles at that time was considered as dogs. He said, even the dogs will eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. And that's how they view. But God says, now at this age, you know, God has shown His mercy to all people everywhere. Hallelujah. And then He says here, teaching us, verse 12, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. So the first thing that God is telling us, we need to deny ungodliness. We need to leave the worldly lust. We should live what? Soberly. Come, say together with me. Soberly. Hallelujah. Be sober. Don't be drunk. Amen. That's why sometimes you know, I want to share this. This year, Pastor was saying, you know, he wants to do some teaching. So we are doing a little bit of teaching because teaching will be good for you. It will mature you. It will challenge you to think. Am I right? Am I right? Hallelujah. If you're all, you know, telling you the things that just excite you emotionally will only last for a moment. Then you need to come back. But this year, we want to challenge you, you know, in your understanding. Hallelujah. It's not just knowledge. I want it to be understanding, a spiritual understanding so that you understand what God requires of you. Deny ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present age. What is this present age? The church age. Hallelujah. The age, you know, where God has invited everyone and say, come, whosoever believes, in the name of Jesus shall have eternal life. They shall not perish, but they will have eternal life. So this is what God expects us. And then the next one in verse 13 is looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you see, while you are living righteously, at the same time, you are supposed to desire the return of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right? And many times we talk about, you know, we talk about living righteously, but we don't talk about returning 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in those days, you know, <laughs> the righteous, even Apostle Paul and some of the apostles, you know, they actually really believed that Jesus might return during their lifetime. Do you know that? If you were to read the scriptures, and actually they are laying down an example to us. So we should have that. We should desire that Jesus reign. And that's why we sing all these songs. All our songs is reign. You know, Jesus reign. Am I right? Be enthroned, O oh God. Hallelujah. Be enthroned in my life. And that's why Jesus taught us to, to, to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, what? Your kingdom come. Hallelujah. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How can that be done? When the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. Titus chapter 2. Let me just read 11 to 13. In the New Living Translation, it says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom. Soberly means wisdom righteousness and devotion to God. You need to be devoted to God. 13, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. A few more scriptures and I'm going to end tonight. So that you come behind in no gift now, this is Paul teaching, you know, the first, uh, the church in Corinthians, he wrote the letter, the first letter to the Corinthians, and he actually knew them very well. If you read the book of Corinthians, you know, he was actually counsel, you know, counseling them, very intimate details about their life. And he said, hey, you know, I want you to have the gifts of God working in your life. I want you to be blessed, amen. I want you to prosper. But at the same time, I want you to eagerly wait, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, as you receive God's gift, how many of you want God's gift? At the same time, are you eagerly waiting? Because that's what the scripture is saying. God will give it to you. But you need to eagerly wait. Hallelujah. You need to expect His return. That's why I shared in the beginning of this year, you know, about, you know, um, you know, the ten, um, the ten virgins, you know, they waited for the bridegroom. And this is important for us. That we will come no behind, that we come behind in no gift. All right? That we come no, uh, we come uh, behind in nothing. We lack in nothing. At the same time, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. But our citizenship is in... Where's your citizenship? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where's your citizenship? You know, the Bible says your true citizenship is not here. That's why God says don't gather for yourself treasures on earth. Be generous. Can you say amen? Bless God's people. Because freely you receive, freely you give. But some of you say, I work so hard. But let me tell you, you can work hard, but if God never bless you, you have nothing. Am I right? There are a lot of people that work very hard. You go to some of the third world, you go to Africa, you go to some of those villages. You know, children will have to work in, coal, uh, in some of the mines you know, where they go for these special minerals. And, uh, you know, they work very hard, but they got nothing. Their whole life they can work till the day they die. And they can only survive for a day. We are blessed. Can you say amen? But our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. In King James, he was saying our conversation. 
that is in old English. But here it says our citizenship is not here. Can you say amen to that? What passport do you hold? I know all of us hold the passport of this country, but let me tell you, you have another passport. Amen? The heavenly one. Your citizenship is in heaven. Praise the Lord. In verse 21, it says, Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control. You know, God is in control. Can you say amen? So if you, you know, abide by God, if you submit yourself to God, God will bring everything in your life under control. You will not get out of control. Can you say amen? I know things seem to be out of control sometimes. But that's why you need to, to pray. Because when you pray, you allow the Spirit of God to work through you. That's why we pray. You know, many of us, you know, we learn, when we learn about the Holy Spirit, we always learn the Holy Spirit is very gentle. Amen? God is very gentle in this age. His mercy is towards us. You know, Jesus said, I stand at the door. Look at that. God stand at the door of your heart. He, he never just budged in. He could. He could come in. He's, he, he's the God of universe. Amen? But he doesn't want you because he doesn't want to do that. Because he wants you, you know, to have this free will to freely worship him, to willingly love him. Amen? And that's what he's created you for. So here he says, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. How many of you, you know, you only need to eat once and you don't have to eat anymore and you'll be healthy all your life? Huh? How many of you would like that? You only eat once and you don't need to eat anymore for the rest of the days. <laughs> For the rest of the day, maybe. Maybe for a couple of days if you are, you know, very, very strong. And that's why the Bible says, compare with the body that he's going to give us, our body is lowly. You know, but yet we love our body. Am I right? We love our body. That's why, you know, the Bible says, no one hates his own body, but cherish it and care for it as Christ cares for the church. But here he says, when Jesus comes back, you know, you have a glorious body like Jesus. Amen? You can still enjoy all the food, but you don't have to eat to survive. You really eat to, en to enjoy. Can you say amen? How many of you would like that? You know, sometimes as you get older, you eat to survive, actually. You make sure you have all the right food. <laughs> but how nice is it to just eat to enjoy and you have a healthy body. You know, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord. Because you have a glorified body. So that is why when Jesus comes back, it's going to be so glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. A few more verses. So Christ was one offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Oh, you never realize that, you know, the Bible commands us to look for his return. Uh, you... Never knew that. There, there's so many verses, right? You know why? Because we always look at the first verse. Oh, he was offered to bear the sins of many. And then we full stop. But here it says, And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. The second time when he comes, he's not going to, he's not going to deal with with the problem of sin because it's been settled. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. The second time he comes is to give you a glorious body. It's to fulfill all the promises that he made to us. Hallelujah. That we will have eternal life and we'll be safe from the curse of sin forevermore. And that's why you need to pray. Let me bring out another point here. You know, because praying once is not enough. Can you say amen? Because you need God. You are still in your lowly bodies. How many of you know that? After God healed you, 
You know, after a while, if you don't take care of your body, as you age, sometimes things will happen. And you need to pray, amen? So that the preserving power of God will continue to work in your life so that you can continue to do God's work, amen? You know, I'm not talking, we are just talking about natural causes. You know, there are some spiritual attacks that will come along our way. How much more we need to pray? Can you say amen? All right. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only. You know, many times we read, we read this scripture, we full stop there. But if you continue, it says, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. They love to see Christ returns. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. This was prophesied. It says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. Who is the spirit? Who is the spirit? The spirit is the Holy Spirit that's within you. Can you say Amen that God has filled you with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will actually cause you to say, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And the bride, who's the bride? Who's the bride? You are the bride. You are the bride of Christ. Amen? He is the bridegroom. So, it's naturally for the bride to want to be with the bridegroom. Last verse, John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. You know, I heard a great man of God once say this. He said, many times, you know, instead of understanding this verse as Jesus going to prepare a place for us, you know, we always do it in the reverse. We want to prepare a place for Jesus. You know, it is not God fits into the place that you have prepared for Him. It is for you to fit into the place that God has prepared for you. You understand what I mean? You know, many times we have a place. We say, God, Jesus, I prepare a place for you. Your place is on Sunday. Your place is on Saturday night. All the others, oh, it's my place. Jesus, you fit into my plan. Jesus, Please bless me now. I'm at this stage where I am doing so and so. I'm in this project. Bless it. But we never understand. Jesus is not saying, I'm going to fit into your place. What is Jesus saying? I will prepare for you. And you have to fit where I place you. Can you say amen? And that's why he say in verse 3, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, that you may be also. I know this is talking about, you know, heaven, a place. But at the same time, you know, we can understand the spiritual truth. And that's why many of us, we struggle in our faith because we always think that we must be in the center of everything. God says no. Yes, He loves you. Amen. He's, you are the apple of His eye. But He is the center. Hallelujah. He's in control of everything. He is the plan maker. Hallelujah. What was the song? Waymaker. Amen. He prepares the way and you walk in it. Isn't it better? The whole problem with us is that we want to do everything. We want to prepare our own way. And that is what the world teaches. But tonight, God is saying differently. You know how nice and how wonderful the church is. You know, when everyone say, God, I am going to follow you. I'm going to be at the place that you want me to be. Because that will be the best place. Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, I just want you to reach out to God even right now. You know, are you out of place? 
Are you out of alignment with God's plan and purposes for you? Tonight, I want you to just reach out and say, Lord, I know the timeline that you have placed me. I know the season that I'm living in right now. And Lord, I've heard your voice, what you want me to do. Lord, I want your will to be done in my life. I want to follow hard after you, O oh God. I want to be devoted to you. I want to be prepared when you come. Because the Spirit and the Bride, Christ, come. Come all those who are thirsty and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Oh, Father Lord, Jesus, come and touch your people, Lord, tonight. The river of life is available for us tonight. And Lord, you say, the Spirit is beckoning us to come. The church of the living God the bride of Christ is beckoning us to come. Come and drink of that river of life. Father Lord, tonight touch your people, O oh Lord. Touch your people. Lord, whatever situation that they are in, let them know that you are there to help. That you will come to where they are. But you are not going to let them be where they are. But you're going to take them and elevate them to a heavenly position, into a spiritual position, into a new positioning of their hearts and mind where they will receive your blessings and your favor. Father Lord, tonight come and touch those that need healing, those that cannot join us tonight, Touch them and heal them. You have never forgotten them. Some of them has been sick for so long. Lying in bed, alone, in their room. Father Lord, we ask that you will come and touch them. Father, I pray for this church. As you say, Lord, in the last days, you will pour out the spirit of grace and supplication, the spirit of intercession upon your people. Father, I pray, O oh Lord, let it come so that your people, Lord, will be prepared by the Spirit of God. As they pray, they'll be transformed and they will know what you want them to do and they will enjoy peace. Lord, you say in the world we will have tribulation, but in you we will have peace. We may not understand how it is done, but Lord, all these things will be done by you supernaturally as we cannot understand how you turn water into wine, but Lord, it will be done. We do not know how the lame walk and the sick heal, Lord, and the blind see. But Lord, it will be done when we align ourselves with you, when we commit ourselves, Lord, to seek your face each and every day of our life. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I pray that this church will not be, Lord, only one day believer, oh Lord, one day church, but this will be a church that is devoted to you every day of their life, oh God every single day, Lord, until your appearing, until you come back for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Touch your people, Lord, tonight. Bless them. Fill their hearts with joy. Fill their hearts with peace. Let your favor be upon them as they leave this place. Let them live with the favor of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.